I'm going to talk about free college and why I don't think that is the best way to help our society. And I'm going to obviously show you the facts and the data about this. Starting somewhere that we can all agree is that college is, is just far too expensive. That year after year, the price of college has exceeded and outpaced inflation, and that has led to a lot of problems and a lot of student loan debt. The average student loan debt, so when someone graduates from college, the average debt is $30,000. $30,000 when you are first starting a career, that, that's a game changer. That's, that's a huge amount of debt to have before you have even started earning real money. If you look at the college, or the cost of college rather, from 1985, and you compare that to the cost of college now, accounting for inflation, you find that it has more than doubled in that time span. So college has continually increased its prices. Um, the benefit we get from it is actually continually decreasing because the more people get educated, the less, um, the less you stand out among others who have the same level of education. Right, So college is quickly becoming essentially the new high school, where if you do not have that level of education, you're not even considered for many jobs. So college is getting too expensive, and that's something we all agree on that needs to be fixed. Those on the left and the Democrats, they tend to think that because it's so expensive, we need to make it free so that those who couldn't afford it have the option to go. Now, I, I disagree with that premise because, again, we're going to college at higher rates than ever before, even though it's the most expensive. But I also don't even think that's the best way to help society, which I'll show shortly. So if you were to just look at the income difference between those who go to college and those who don't, again, you might come to the conclusion that the best way to improve society and reduce poverty is just to have everyone go to college. But that is too simplistic in nature and it ignores, well, a lot of the data. First off, if we do just look at the income difference, you find that a bachelor's degree, on average, earns about 40% more than just a high school diploma. And 40% is statistically significant. That's a lot of money. There's no denying that. But it's not, it's not accurate to look at just that and say, by that logic, but by that we should then give free college to everybody because that'll decrease poverty. That's not the way to go. The Brookings Institute is a left-wing or center-left institute and they've done a lot of research on poverty and eliminating poverty specifically, or decreasing it at least. And they have found that there are really only three things that you need to do as an individual to not be poor in the United States, not be in poverty. Only three things. It's not like it's a list of 10 or 100 things you have to do. There's only three of them. So the order is very important. So keep in mind as I go through these. Number one, you need to at least graduate high school. Number two is you need to get a full-time job. And number three is that you have no children until you are married. Those three things, again, in that order, are very important. It obviously does not mean that if you mess up one of those, like let's say you, you drop out of high school, that doesn't mean you're doomed to failure. It just means you're going to have more obstacles than someone who did those three things. Another important part of that is that it doesn't specify or it doesn't really matter where you started off in life. If you abide by those three rules, you will have a very good chance of being well off, right? So if you start off poor or you start off rich, as long as you do those three things, your outcome will still be very good. Then they actually found that only 2% of people who did those things ended up poor. And 75% of people who did those things ended up in the middle class, earning $55,000 or more. So to me, that seems pretty statistically significant. And I'm one, what I'm going to show on the next section is that out of those three things, education level above high school is actually the least important thing you can do. So keeping those three things in mind that we just talked about, I'm actually going to show with, with more data, also from the Brookings Institute, that the level of education acquired above the high school level actually does not change the poverty level that much. It's, it's the least important of the other factors. Here's what I mean. So if you can't see this, um, I apologize, it might be a little bit harder to follow, but I'm going to throw out some numbers and statistics at you about the poverty rate. So in 2016, the poverty rate was 13%. What they did at the Brookings Institute is they played with a couple of factors, including your marital status, 
number of hours worked, level of education, and things like that. And they, they saw how much each of those factors would decrease the poverty rate. The number one factor, the most important thing, was full-time work. The second most important thing was your marital status. And after that is education. So what they found is that the level of education you attained above the high school level decreases the poverty rate by 2%. So it decreases it from 13% to 11%, more or less. They also found that um, marital rate, so if your marital status, if you are married and you don't have kids out of wedlock, that decreases the poverty rate by a full 4.5%. But the most important thing is full-time work. That decreases the poverty rate by 6.5%. So again, education above high school level is 2%. Marital status is 4.5%. But a full-time job is a staggering 6.5%. So essentially, having a full-time job is three times more important than getting a higher education when it comes to decreasing the poverty rate and ensuring that you are not in poverty. So that's something that's really important and one of the things I feel is lacking in this push for free college education, right? Because again, I believe that their intentions are correct and they want to help lift people out of poverty, but they're focusing on the 2% solution when they should be looking at the 6.5 or the 4.5% solution. And those two, so the four and a half and the six and a half, both of them have to do with personal responsibility, right? And those are the things that we should be focusing on as opposed to the 2% solution. So that's pretty much all I had for you guys today. Um, again, hopefully this, the numbers made a bit of sense if you couldn't watch. I think I might continue on this point at a later date to talk about possible ways we could decrease how much tuition costs, because I didn't quite get to that. But if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe um, let me know what you thought about this video. Go ahead and like and yeah, all those, all those good things. Thanks for watching. See you next time.